Welcome to our worship service at First Unitarian Society of Ithaca, a community that reaches for connection even while distanced, digs deep for inspiration in uncertain times, and strives to engage with a complex and uncertain world as we work to shepherd our community through this time of physical distancing and craziness. Thank you for joining us today to find some peace, hope, and centering here. My name is Jennifer Stridemullen, and I'm the Celebration Associate today. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to everyone, whether you're a newcomer or longtime attendee, member of the Ithaca community, or watching from afar. Welcome if you're watching with us on Sunday morning or if you're watching later in the week. We are delighted that you have chosen to worship with us. Our theme this month is stillness, and that will be reflected in the music and messages of this worship. Be sure to check your email, our Facebook page, and our website for more information about how to create connections. If you would like to receive weekly updates describing opportunities for engagement, please email a request to office at uuithaca.org. This month, all month, as our Side with Love campaign, we are collecting new headphones and earbuds for students, for school students, at, for the village at Ithaca. With the holidays, this week is a busy one. This evening at 7 p.m., we have a quiet Christmas service for a quiet evening of music, meditation, and shared silence to honor the stillness of the season. Tomorrow, Monday night, is a short solstice blessing followed by a time for sharing of cookie recipes and cookie decorating. This is an all ages event and it's at 6.30 tomorrow. And the big event is our Christmas Eve service, which will begin with music at 7 p.m. on Thursday and then the service will start at 7.30. I know we will all miss Sage Chapel this year and seeing such a large community there. But as with everything else in 2020, we ha will have a unique experience this year. So join us to savor some togetherness and some modified tradition on Thursday evening. While many of us may be physically alone and distanced from our loving families, we can still hold the stillness and wonder of the holidays in our hearts and by sharing this lovely service with music at seven on Thursday and the service itself at 7.30. Our service this morning has been pre-recorded, but we look forward to sharing the broadcast with you and seeing you at the live coffee hour that follows. The solstices teach us that darkness comes, that darkness goes. The solstices teach us that light comes, that light goes. The solstices teach us calmly silently, to be calm, silent, learning. The solstices teach us as we circle the sun that everything flies. The solstices teach us to remember the dark, to remember the light, to remember time, the seasons, and love as we circle the sun. Whoever you are, whoever you love, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Here you belong. We light like this chalice for the warmth of love, the light of truth, and the energy of action.
So it is a time of holiday festivities, and this year we gather together in a new way. We gather together not in person, but still with one another in celebration. We are in a time of telling old stories that remind us of the power of the natural world, of the human heart, and of love to overcome difficulty and fear. Each year at this time, we retell these stories to bring light into the darkness and to bring warmth to our hearts. This morning, I invite us to hear these ancient and familiar stories in a new way. Our Unitarian Universalist faith tradition is one that draws from many sources, and this means we draw from many different stories to help us make meaning of our lives. Today, we will remember stories about babies being born in stables, of lifting up the value of community, of light in the darkness, and miracles of oil and faith. Many of you have gathered here with us to take part in the telling of the story, and we are so grateful to have you here. You will help us to experience these old, old stories in a new way, as if they were happening all over again for the first time right here and right now in front of our eyes. As we narrate this tale, we will indicate when it's your turn to be highlighted in the story. Don't worry about doing things right or making mistakes because there aren't any mistakes. Oh, and make sure to sing when the songs show up midway through. The words will be shown on the screen. Today, we will tell the story of the birth of a baby named Jesus, who grew up to have a hard and important and wonderful life, and whose teachings were all about radical, challenging love and acceptance. There is only us bringing the story of that birth joyfully and messily and chaotically to life. And joyful and messy and chaotic is how new life always comes into being. So that is exactly how it should be here this morning too. Today, we will tell this ancient story using adapted words from the book, Good Night Manger, which was written by Laura Sassy. Although this story is an illustration of the birth of Jesus, the baby and the parents in this story do not have names. That is because as Sophia Lyons Foz once said, every night a child is born is a holy night and this story is no different. Indeed, this story is about all of us, not just one child born on a specific night. We've adapted the story to include some of the other traditions and stories we share in our UU community. This wintry mix of a story is a representation of our diverse faith tradition and our affirmation of drawing from many sources for guidance and meaning. We all seek to bring comfort and healing to one another. We seek to bring love into this world and to welcome a new light and new life into this world with love and community. So I invite you to join us as the story unfolds and we will share the telling of this story together as a reminder of the beauty of community, the miracle of life and the holiness of song. Our story begins in Bethlehem. We just need to find Mary and Joseph and the baby. There's Mary. I think Joseph and the baby are with some other animals. All right, sweet. Stars, do you have stars twinkling? Stars are twinkling. Baby's fed, time for some dreidel. Do we have a dreidel? 
Stars are twinkling. Very nice twinkling. Very nice. I like it. Time for some dreidel before bed. We've fried the, fried the lot case and jelly go, donuts galore. Time to light the menorah. Tonight is night one. There's seven more. Mama says it's time for bed. Hug him, squeeze him, hold him tight. Dim the lantern, say good night. Oh no, they realize the oil is low. There's only enough for one night's glow. Just like the Maccabees in second temple time, the oil might surprise us and we'll be just fine. This has been the longest night. The solstice has come and now we'll have more light. Into the darkness, the stars will shine. There are stars shining again. And our days will be longer. Just give it some time. In the manger, baby goes. Wiggles fingers, wiggles toes. <laughs> Chews a lot also. Hen and donkey. We have a hen and a donkey. I see a hen. And a donkey, there we go. Hen and donkey gather round. All right, then. Hush, says Papa, not a sound. Cluck, he's cute. Oh yes, hee ha. Now sleepy baby starts to wah. Shh, brays donkey, time for bed. Here's a pillow for your head. Hay smells sweet, but how it itches. Baby wriggles, squirms, and twitches. Hen adds feathers, soft and brown. Baby grabs some, snuggles down. Soon Hosanna's overhead rouse the little sleepy head. Angels, voices, angels. Yes, there they are. What are they doing? They're dancing, but that's, where's the script? Where am I? Angels' voices shout with joy. And we sing. baby boy. Mama says, be quiet, please. Your voices carry on the breeze. Pa rocks baby to and fro. Does he slumber? No, no, no. Flying angels and a star. Soon bring help from near and far. Goats clink horns and cows and camels dance. Dancing cow, oh, that is some good dancing cows and camels. Will baby doze now? Not a chance. Sheep leap railings. <laughs> Sheep. <laughs> Tipping pails, jumping over the Yule log. It never fails. There's the Yule log. <laughs> It's Hanukkah and solstice and Christmas too. What's an excited sheep to do? Jump with excitement, one and all. Good tidings to everyone and deck the halls.
bulls splash, poor baby wails. So much noise, he just can't sleep. Then tap, tap, tap behind the sheep. Three wise people knock at the stable door with royal pomp and gifts galore. But look behind them wearing black, red, and green, the seven principles of Kwanzaa, some of the best I've seen. Yes, there they are, self-determination, purpose, and unity, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, creativity's a must, and oh yes, there's faith, which requires great trust. Mama's frantic in a tizzy, who knew stables were so busy? Mama says, here's what we'll do, sing a quiet song or two. Then with voices big and small, gentle singing fills the stall. Baby smiles, baby sighs, stretching, yawning, rubbing eyes. Baby sleeps as stars on high twinkle to the lullaby. Good night, manger. Good night, stall. Time to sleep now, one and all. have gathered everyone together in gallery view so we can see everyone together. Everyone here is part of the story. Just look. Look at the shining stars and the angels. Look at the shepherds and the sheep and the wise people, the principles of Kwanzaa, the Yule log, the dreidel, all the animals gathered together. Look at the parents and their baby. These ancient and familiar stories are about hope and yearning. These are stories and traditions about hope in a chaotic world. The power of relationship, the resilience of the human spirit. They are about the mystery of light in the darkness. Ours is a story about love and mystery and wonder, and it's all here. It's all still here. Each week we create a space in our shared worship together for communal spiritual practice. In that time, we lift up the names and the circumstances that call for our joy and our celebration and for our concern and our sorrow. This week, I lift up all those who are most directly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, including those in Ithaca and beyond who've tested positive. I lift up those brilliant minds who help to create a vaccine and those who bravely are the first to receive it. And let there be prayers ascending for the over 300,000 people in this country who have lost their lives and the many others around the globe, we lift them up and their families up in love. And we pray that the day will come when those on the margins, those who are most vulnerable, that they may have health care and safety that they deserve. If you are watching this service in its live format, I invite you to type your joy or your sorrow into the chat box. Or if you wish, you can speak it to the people you're watching with or aloud to yourself. Together, may we trust that these joys and sorrows, this ebb and flow of our lives, that it is held by the universe. And may we offer our love and compassion so that all may be held with care. At the beginning of our live coffee hour each week, we'll have a facilitator who will offer space for the sharing of joys and sorrows. May we all 
engage in this communal spiritual practice of listening deeply, of offering our care and compassion to one another, of showing up in the ways we can, even when we need to be separate. Now holding in our hearts the joys and sorrows of our lives, those spoken and those that remain in the silent sanctuaries of our hearts, let us join together in a few moments of prayer and reflection. An offering by Margaret K. Gooding called Why Not a Star. They told me that when Jesus was born, a star appeared in the heavens above the place where the young child lay. When I was very young, I had no trouble believing wondrous things. I believed in the star. It was a wonderful miracle, part of a long ago story foretelling an uncommon life. They told me a supernova appeared in the heavens in its dying burst of fire. When I was older and believed in science and reason, I believed the story of the star explained. But I found that I was unwilling to give up on the star fitting symbol for the birth of one whose uncommon life has been long remembered. The star explained became the star understood for Jesus, for Buddha, for Zarathustra. Why not a star? Some bright star shines somewhere in the heavens each time a child is born. Who knows what it may foretell? Who knows what uncommon life may yet again unfold if we but give it a chance. So may it be. Amen and blessed be. Each week, we take an offering to sustain the important ministries and programs of this congregation and its presence in Ithaca. The giving information should be on your screen in a moment. Giving to the plate is important as a symbol of our gratitude for the service and our ongoing commitment to support the work of this church. The first time you give with the text link, it's long and clumsy, gathering a lot of information. But after that first time, it really is very quick to just text the amount. So please take a moment and give through either text, through Breeze, or you can always mail a check. May these gifts bring about connection, inspiration, and engagement within these walls and beyond. Thank you. 
Our reading this morning are words by Sophia Lyon Foz. For so the children come, and so they have been coming, always in the same way they come. No angels herald their beginnings, no prophets predict their future courses, no wise men see a star to follow and to show where to find the babe that will save humankind. Yet each night a child is born is a holy night. Parents sitting beside their children's cribs feel glory in the sight of a new life beginning. They ask, where and how will this new life end, or will it ever end? Each night a child is born is a holy night, a time for singing, a time for wondering, a time for worshiping. Tonight, for the first time in 800 years, the Christmas star will light up the sky. The brightness will occur sometime like 45 minutes after sunset, and some say that it will last all week. The Christmas star, the star of Bethlehem, many believe, is actually not a star, but a perfect alignment of the planets Jupiter and Saturn. The last time these planets came this close to one another was in the year 1226, during the Middle Ages, and it's believed it also occurred on the night of Jesus' birth. I'm hoping that we will be able to catch a glimpse of it, of this natural wonder, and marvel at the historical significance of its rare occurrence. There will be a moment of stillness and wonder as we end a year that has challenged our spirits, our hearts, our resolve. This will be a reminder of the power of the natural world to align in ways that evoke awe and wonder for us all. This will be a chance to pause, to honor, to reflect, to realign ourselves in the ways of love and compassion. This morning in our service together, we told an age old story of a baby born in a stable, of parents struggling for him to rest, of animals and wise people and others gathering around to bring about love amidst a difficult situation. And just like most of this year, we have had to tell this story, this annual tradition in new ways using technology and different types of creativity and finding new ways to be together. It was messy and chaotic. It didn't go as we planned, which is where many of our, our people are at these days. I certainly am feeling the messy, the chaotic, the unplanned. And still this annual tradition happened in unexpected and wonderful ways, people still showed up, brought their ideas, their creativity, and fun-loving spirit. The human capacity for creativity and innovation is nothing short of astounding. The human capacity for resilience continues to amaze me every day, day in, day out. The ways that we can foster love and community and creativity in our world when the, parent, when the planets align and perhaps more remarkably when they don't. It's a true marvel. And I think part of this ability to be resilient is rooted in our capacity to trust and to love. I think part of this is rooted in the process of trying and failing and trying again. Part of it is rooted in our acknowledgement that life is a search for truth and meaning and that that sense of balance and stillness is something our hearts will yearn for forever. We don't always know when or how or why, but like the Christmas star, there will be, I hope, moments of finding the alignment and the balance point in our lives. We don't always create those moments. Actually, more often, 
than not, we don't create them, but they are there regardless. They happen in those moments when we notice that things are okay, that we are okay, that we will be okay, that we will find the balance point. As the 14th century mystic Julian of Norwich said, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Not in a Hallmark greeting card kind of way, but in a, this world is greater and more vast than this present moment, and this too shall pass kind of way. Sometimes these moments at the balance point are short-lived. Sometimes they last longer than expected, but they are there if we're paying attention. Two summers ago, my extended family went on a vacation together. Our ages ranged from 12 to 72, I think, three generations. Many of the nights we ate dinner together, sometimes after days packed with adventure and activity, and some nights we stayed up for hours talking and laughing. Now, one evening we had a late dinner together, and my nephew, who was 12 at the time, was pretty tired. We'd had a long day, and he told his dad, my brother-in-law, that he wanted to go to bed. Well, we were taking too long, I guess, to wrap up dinner, and the next thing I know, I look over and he's curled up on his chair, my 12-year-old nephew, his head in his dad's lap, fast asleep. And during this tender moment, his dad, my brother-in-law, is balancing his dinner plate on his son's head, trying to finish his meal. It was funny, but it was beautiful. Such a real moment about parenting, about the need for rest amidst the chaos, about the sheer ability to balance real life things in any given moment. These past few months have really been a whirlwind, a challenge, a learning curve for many of us. Many of us have had to balance things in a new way that's caused us to tap into our creativity and awe in a way that we may have lost touch with before. Some of us have had to find a new way of being that balances family and work and alone time in a way that's sustainable and real. Others of us have had to find a balance point amidst a time when most of our ways of engaging with the world have been put on hold, when there is a feeling that there's not enough, we have found a way through. And all of us have been invited into this new moment of a world off balance, trying to find its balance point together. And just as in any new experience, we don't yet know what the future will bring. There is so much potential for growth and love and possibility. In our living into this newness, may we be patient with ourselves. In those moments of awe and wonder, may we pause to honor the beauty. In the moments when we feel off kilter, pushed to our limits, overwhelmed, may we tune in to the parts of ourselves that are yearning for balance. May we honor those places. May we welcome in unexpected guests. Amidst this strange and beautiful time in which we live, may we continue to search for that sense of balance, of belonging, of love in all the chaos and the worry. And when we don't find what we need, May we continue to search for the truth and meaning, the stillness, the balance. May we trust that it is there. So may it be. Amen. Blessed be.
When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. May it be so. Merry Christmas. Go in peace. Thank you.